Well, this is the last day. I'll be glad when this day is over. Well, I bet Thanks. you will, Sam. I'll be rather glad, too. Everybody quiet! Keep it down! No, but you know, like a cat. Quiet! Oh, yeah, get them up, okay? Quiet! Quiet out of sight! Ready? Yep. All right, Beck. this is it. Give it everything you've got. Hey, you, bullfighter in the foreground. Hold your stomach in. Stick out your chin. Try to be happy. Okay, turn them over. Scene 361, take eight. This is the finish now. Let's make it good. All right? Action. you're in love with the lady. Miss Woodward, just at the moment, you're in love with the bullfighter. That's fine. Now hold it. Still. Still. Okay, it's in the bag. Okay. All right, folks, that's all. Hold it again, I'll sign your check. Hey, I'll check your wardrobe in. Smith, may I speak to you a minute? Well, surely, what's on your mind? Come into my dressing room, will you? How many letters have you received? Six in all. That one only this morning. I found it in my makeup box before I went on the set. Are the others like this? Practically. Each one repeats the original threat, that I'll never live to see this picture previewed. I can't understand it, Smith. I haven't got an enemy in the world that I know of. Certainly no one who wants to kill me. How do you know? I myself might want to kill you. If I had a jealous disposition, I might persuade myself that your love scenes with my wife are far too fervid to be just acting. Oh, the... <laughs> but of course I haven't a jealous disposition. Oh, don't kid, Smith. This thing has got me jittery. I can't think, I can't sleep, my digestion is ruined. I've taken enough of this soda to drown an elephant. That's all right, thanks. Forget it, Neil. It's the work of some harmless nut. How do I know he's harmless? Or else... Did you ever think of this? The whole thing may be one of Johnny Morgan's publicity stunts. I'll find out. I'm going to see the old man about it. He wants a thousand dollars a week and a six-week guarantee. We can't go for anything like that. Good afternoon, Mr. Dubeck. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. 
You can go right in, Mr. Dubeck. Mr. Hewitt is waiting for you. Oh, yeah. Don't forget the pinochle game Saturday night. Uh, you better see your wife about that. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Yeah. Well, have you finished? Just fade it out. Uh, do you like it? In a way. <clears throat> I think it's the best picture this studio ever turned out. That's exactly what you said when you finished the same picture seven years ago. Well, I was right, wasn't I? Right. Song of the Tarry Dog grossed over three million dollars. And it made Edmund Strange the greatest star of his day. Poor fellow. It's a pity he didn't live to make talking pictures. In a way. Then again, maybe his voice would have been a disappointment. Yeah, we'll never know. Well, I hope you'll write again about the picture. I ought to know. I directed them both. And it's going to make Neil Dubeck the greatest star of his day, which is now. Have you seen him in those love scenes with my wife? He's terrific. And don't start that again, will you? I... <laughs> Neil isn't himself today. He's just learned he's to be murdered at the preview. What? What's that? Oh, I've been receiving anonymous letters, six of them. My home, my dressing room. I found one in my coat pocket. It's beginning to get on my nerves. Why didn't you say something? Oh, I didn't pay any attention to the first two, but now it's... Well, perhaps we'd better notify the police? First, I'd like to find out if they're coming from the publicity department. Publicity? Well, if it's a stunt, I'd like to be told about it. I can't believe it. Johnny Morgan's been with us ten years. Maybe someone in his office is responsible. Well, we'll soon find out. Send Johnny Morgan here, please. Mr. Morgan, can you come over to Mr. Hewitt's office right away? Okay, I'm practically there right now. The master's voice. Oh, wait a minute. What was it I wanted to ask you? Oh, yes. For the 58th time, darling, will you marry me? Yes? Oh, precious. I'll see if Mr. Morgan's in. This is Mr. Morgan speaking, and he's not in. Your horoscope is right. Oh, Peggy, will you please forget the stars and listen to me? I love you. Will you marry me? I can't go any further. The boss is waiting for me. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yes? Did you know that Dubeck has been receiving threatening letters? Who doesn't? He's told everybody on the lot. You don't know where they came from? Absolutely not. Does that satisfy you? It satisfies me that they're real, but meaningless. Listen, we get letters from cranks every day. That's the penalty you pay for being famous. When this picture hits the market, you'll be greater than Edwin Strange. No, sir. Not greater. There'll never be another Edwin Strange. I prefer to think so. Do you mind? No. Thanks. You say everyone on the lot has heard about these letters. Well, what about the papers? Oh, the boys know all about it. But I made them promise to lay off for a while. Oh, good. Good? It's perfect. Suppose this story broke. Neil Dubeck's life in danger. And then we find that the letters have been written by some 14-year-old kid who's been reading mystery stories. <laughs> Swell publicity for an important picture. Yeah, well, suppose it isn't a kid. Suppose someone really wants to take my life. Then he wouldn't tell you about it. He'd do it. Well, people have been murdered after receiving threatening letters. For instance, who? Oh, come on. Even Morgan's right. Let's play around the golf and forget it. Yeah, that's right, Neil. Forget it. Goodbye, Mr. Hewitt. Goodbye. Now, don't you worry. We'll take care of everything. Thanks. Come on, Neil. What's the footage now? Still too long. 7,200. It's too short for a picture like this. I still think we can drop out that first comedy sequence. What's the matter with it? Didn't make me laugh. I didn't want it to. A laugh would fracture that sour puss of yours. You're delivering the print yourself, aren't you? Yeah. Phone me when it's actually in the theater. I don't want any wakes or slip-ups. Will you be at home? Yes. Hewitt and Dubeck are having dinner with me. How is Mr. Dubeck feeling? Pretty well, all things considered. Well, here's to you, Neil. In another hour or two, you'll be famous. All right. Shall we drink to that? Indeed. Here, here. And then you'll wonder why you were so worried. <laughs> Come on, you'll drink your coffee and we'll get started. No, thanks. I'll skip the coffee if you don't mind and just have some soda instead. Certainly. Briggs, will you bring some, please? Yes, sir. No, no. Uh, I prefer my own. You'll find it in the right-hand pocket of my coat, please. Very well, sir. Hmm? Sorry, old man. It's not your dinner. It's my nerves. I hope the cook doesn't hear about this. You'll never get over it. 
And besides, Neil, if they kill you, they'll get us all. We'll be right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Mrs. Smith, may the preview be as successful as was your dinner tonight? Very well spoken, my dear Mr. Hewitt. May I mix it for you, sir? Thanks, I'll fix it. Well, after the preview tonight, you'll join me in a sort of a celebration, you know. Right? Let's make it a little one. We're starting a new picture in the morning. Yes, that's yes, right. Shall we go, gentlemen? My best wishes for a big success, sir. Thank you, Greg. Well, now, we'll soon learn what the great public thinks of our latest effort, eh? <laughs> well, <coughs> we'll all go in my car. Hi, Extra. Read all about it. All about the Dubeck murder trap. Hi, hey. Extra. Hi. Hi, Extra. Read all about it. All about the Dubeck murder trap. Hi, Extra. Read all about it. All about the Dubeck murder trap. Hi, Extra. Read all about it. All about the Dubeck murder trap. They cracked it wide open on us. Too hot a story to keep. Don't eat so fast, Johnny. That's all right. I'll borrow a shot of bicarb from Jubek. So that guy's got so he carries a can of it round with him. I don't blame him. Something's going to happen. Where'd you get your information from? The stars again? Yes. Well, cheer up. Nothing can happen. It's a cloudy night. Hi, Extra. Read all about it. Ranger. You know, he wrote the music for Love and Blue. There's Charlie Ruggles. Come on, let's go. Well, he always comes to do back previews. Extra, extra, do back threaten with death. Extra, extra, do back threaten with death. I'm not going in, I can't. Oh, you can't back out. No. I'm not going in, I tell you. Do you want the morning papers to say that the hero of Song of the Toreador was scared away from his own preview? Well, they'd never stop kidding you. <laughs> go up the alley. We'll go in the side door and avoid the crowd. Sorry, Mr. Dubeck. Now let's have a good one of all of you. That's it. One big smile. It couldn't be helped, Johnny. I did my best to keep it out. Stirred up the police. <laughs> Half of that mob in there is detectives. Yeah, and your old pal Mickey McCain is in charge of them. Yeah, pity to waste good cops on a gag like this. Boy, oh boy, what a race. The crowd's wild. Here they come into the back stretch. Yellow Jack is leading. Leo second. Long range third. Recovery fourth. Doesn't look like he had a chance. Here he is, number eight. Come on, recovery. The crowd is rooting for him. Here's the finish. Look at old recovery go. See him crawling up on that black day. There he is, every inch of champion, the winner. Here we are in sunny Switzerland, the home of the yodel. Cheese with holes in it and ski jumpers. My, my, hasn't it got cold suddenly? Seems as though all they do on the Alps is slide down a mountain and then... Walk right back up again. Looks easy, doesn't it? I told you that was Neil Dubeck. And Claire Woodward's opinion. Is someone really going to kill him? No, it's just a publicity story.
chance of anything going wrong. McCain's got four men in there. I'm not worrying, Chief. I only hope Max enjoying the picture. Only 500 feet more and nobody's been killed yet. Okay, Johnny, you've still got your actor right side up. Yeah, thanks very much. You cops have been a great help. on Dubeck's death. Now, Miss Woodward, or Mrs. Smith, which is it? Mrs. Smith in private life. Now, Mrs. Smith, Neil Dubeck was very friendly toward you. Uh, that is, you and your husband. Well, we knew him fairly well. I don't think Neil had any really close friends. But you two knew him about as well as anyone. Why, yes. Yes, I think so. How long had he been using sedatives? I didn't know that he ever did. You never even suspected it? Certainly not. I don't believe it. Because you don't want to believe it. As a matter of fact, Neil Dubeck died of an overdose of some narcotic. You mean he committed suicide? It might have been accidental. Or it might have been murder. Have you ever noticed anything peculiar about him? Those letters made him pretty nervous. He had indigestion. Kept taking bicarbonate of soda all the time. Oh, bicarbonate, huh? That's right. In fact, he insisted on using his own bicarbonate. Do you remember? 
Yes, we've got that too. It's being analyzed. Well, I won't keep you up any more tonight. Well, thanks, Lieutenant. But I wouldn't advise any of you to take a trip to Europe for a rest. Stand by. We may need you. I'll be on the set at 9 o'clock. Okay. That'll be all for tonight. You better shoot around Claire's scenes in the morning and let her get a little sleep. I shan't need her till 11 o'clock. Good night, Mr. Hewitt. Good night, Hewitt. This is bad. Bad. If it ever comes out that Neil died from an overdose of medicine. Medicine. Yes, that's it. Come on. Johnny. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Why don't you attend to your own work and stop trying to solve crimes? No, it's lots of fun. Chance to meet interesting people. Well, why not join the police department if you're going to prowl around all night at McCain? How much sleep did you get? Plenty. I don't believe you slept a wink. Yes, I did. I dozed off a few times while McCain was telling me all the cute sayings of a six-year-old kid. You know, the trouble with you is your birth date. Ah. No, I suppose you're sorry I was ever born. Not only that, huh? but your birthday is July the 23rd, the worst possible date to be born on. The vibrations of the crab mingle with those of the lion. That makes you a crab in the morning and a lion at night. Well, who isn't? What? A crab in the morning. But when we're married, if we ever do get married, and I don't see any reason in the world why we shouldn't... Because a daughter of Scorpio should never marry with a son of Leo, and I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio, huh? Yes. <laughs> that doesn't frighten me a bit. Now, what'd I ever do to her? <laughs> You've been keeping me up nights. Well, I've been checking up on your friend Smith. There was poison in that bicarbonate, all right. And Dubeck took a dose of it at Smith's house. Okay, very pretty girl. The butler told me that he found an outside window open in the hall. And Smith left the table once to talk on the phone in the hall. Was there ever any trouble between Smith and Dubeck? Not that I know of. Smith used to kid Dubeck about paying too much attention to his wife, but it was just kidding. You think it might have been kidding on the square? And another thing, I'd like to know more about Smith's assistant. Tyson? Hmm. He may be harmless enough, but he always seems to be around when trouble breaks loose. Hmm. They're both over on the set. Want to have a talk with them? Yeah. Say, these cigars are all right. Where do you get them? Point your gun at him as if you were arresting him. That's right. Yeah. What's that? That's old John. What? <laughs> Our pet dummy. He's been hanged or thrown off buildings about 50 times in the last 10 years. That ought to soften him up. Oh, no, he's tough. He can take it. I wish they wouldn't let things like that hang around here. Come on, on the set, on the set. Make it snappy, will you? Rollins, you come in through the window from the roof. That's right. Here, down a few steps and stop. You see Miss Woodward downstairs. Uh, Claire. Claire. You come in, you stop. You see him, you know there's trouble coming. Right. Then you speak your lines and shoot straight at her. The blank cartridges won't reach that far. Yes, sir. Right. Assistant! Assistant! Yes, Mr. Smith. We'll take it. Fight! How's the sound? All ready. You okay? Okay. Go ahead. Quiet, everybody! Quiet on the stage! 83, take one. Camera.
So, you thought I was fool enough to let you double-cross me. Well, I wasn't. That's why I'm here. But you're wrong. You're wrong. I didn't. <laughs> Hey, give me that gun. Who put these bullets in this pistol? I loaded that gun five minutes ago with blanks. Where'd you leave it? On top of my box, right back of the set. Both gun and a box of blanks. I hope you don't blame me for this. Show me where the prop box is. Yes, sir. Claire, can I help you to your dressing room? Yes, please. Here's the box, right where I left it. He hasn't had time to leave the lot. Phone the front gate. No one is to leave. No one. He's still here. And I'm going to keep this place locked up and nobody is to leave this studio till I find him. Don't let anyone leave this stage. Quiet, please. No, nobody can leave. Everybody stay here. Let that big building on the left. Hurry up. Take your men to the camera department. The first turn to the right. Okay. that Mr. Hewitt is busy. Tell Mr. Hewitt to give us an official statement. A war bullet in every hour. That'll give us all a break. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but Mr. Hewitt is busy. Look here, McCain. We can't lock up a studio full of people. We've got pictures to make. Go ahead and make them. What's to prevent you? All I say is don't let anybody out of those gates until we've had a chance to investigate. Uh, we've got 700 employees. Where are we going to let them sleep? Let them sleep in the dressing rooms. Put up cuts on the sound stages. What would you do if there was an earthquake or a big fire? You'd look after your employees, wouldn't you? Well, you're facing an emergency right now. Say, Ben, what about the legality of this thing? Can we keep these people prisoners? Well, that's up to the police. It's their orders. Right, and Kane? We're not keeping anybody prisoner. If any man wants to get out of here, he can. But he'll have to answer so many questions, he'll be glad to stay in. Use stage two for the women's dormitory and seven for the men. Arrange to feed 700 until further notice. Yes, breakfast too. Everything. Well, get supplies. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I can't see it tonight, Toots. Yeah, well, we've got a pretty clear idea of who it was. No, no, I can't. I can't tell it to you now. I'll call you later. What's the matter? You're going the wrong direction, pal, that way. But I have an appointment with my dentist. No, you're making an appointment with the doctor right now. Well, listen here, I'll see Mr. Hewitt about this. This is an outrage, that's what it is. It's all right with me, go ahead. I'm going to make this my office. Extension 234. And you can reach me here at any time. Hello, John. Hello, Tom. Got any matches? That would be surprised. After this trip, my coffee and donuts. Hello? Lieutenant McCain? Jones speaking. I'm in Tyson's office. Yes, sir. Direct this building. I just found a note here. Stay right there. I'm sending two men over. It says... <coughs> Come on, quick.
Demand Police Headquarters. The Chief's Office. McCain speaking. Lieutenant McCain speaking. Send the emergency squad over right away. Yes, every available man. Yes, another murder. Are you sure no one came in here but Tyson? Did Neil Dubeck have any women friends? Yes, that's easy for you to say. You're in New York, but we're right here in the thick of it. And we're doing everything humanly possible. I'm positive that's the knife Dubeck used in the Song of the Toreador. Shooting in there? Why not? I'm going to stay here tonight anyway. What are they doing? 372, 22, hit 84, 96, hit 792, 40. Yeah. I hope you won't mind, but I'm a little nervous. All right. It's perfectly all right. I think we're all over You all ready? All ready, Mr. Smith. OK, let's rehearse it. Quiet, please. If I could trust you, I might take a chance. But I never trust No, no, that'll never do. Now, let's stop this foolishness. I'll show you. If I could trust you, I might take a chance. But I'll never trust a woman. You see what I mean? Yes, sir. Now, play up to him, Claire. There's no sense in your being upset. This is no time for nerves. Come down, I tell you. Oh, Gordon, dear, pull yourself together. I'm sorry. I suppose I'm just a little tired. Well, let's do it. Pick your places. We'll try it once, and then we'll shoot it. If I could only trust you, I might take a chance, but I never trust a woman. I don't care whether you trust me or not. I'm not going to. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't seem to remember my life. Do you, do you mind going over? Certainly not. I found this on my desk this morning. It's the same as the notes Jebeck got. <laughs> What do you give it to me for? Well, you're the publicity man, aren't you? Hubert doesn't want any publicity on this stuff. Hey, that note's good for a front page story. And swell stuff for your picture. Yeah. But if he breaks in any of the papers, I'm going to take the rap, huh? You better give it to McCain. Throw that one in. Now, hit the main switch. <laughs> Joe Walker. Be back standing. What's the idea, Walker? What are you doing here? I just got back from location at Palm Springs. I heard about the murder. I thought you might need me to double for the back if there are any retakes. I'm sorry if I've upset anybody. There won't be any retakes. I'll call you if I need you. All right. And uh, don't stay around on the set. Yes, sir. It's no use, Gordon. I can't go on. My nerves are in rags. I can't say that I blame you. I had a bit of a jolt myself. Go on and rest up. We'll all be better tomorrow. See you later. All right, dear. Dismiss the company and call them for 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but you're behind schedule now. I'm behind the eight ball now. What's the big idea? Yeah, leave him alone. The mastermind must not be disturbed. And I don't want to listen to a lot of foolish questions, such as, is the studio really locked up? How long is it going to last? And what is it like? If you'd stop fooling with that camera and listen to me, it might be to your advantage. Ah, at last you're going to say yes, huh? Johnny, your horoscope indicates you are in great danger. Mars is in the ascendancy, and that means trouble. Now, most great investigators have a strong Scorpio influence in the horoscope. You'd better listen to me. I keep listening. And what do I hear? All I want is a simple answer, yes. All I get is a lot of ravings about lions, scorpions, centipedes, and black widow spiders. Listen, if you want to be really superstitious, here's something to occupy that primitive mind of yours. There's a jinx on the song of the Toreador. The picture's haunted. What do you mean? Well, first the leading man gets killed, then someone takes a shot at the leading lady. 
Is that coincidence or what? What do you think? Well, I always advised against remaking the picture, didn't I? But did you really think something would happen? I didn't think anything would happen. I thought the remake would be a flop, because Dubeck was not a great an actor as Eddie Strange. And I still think I'm right on that. He was a great actor, Eddie Strange. And a great guy, too. There. How does that look? Very interesting. What is it? <laughs> you know my hobby is taking animal pictures. And I have to do something to pass away the time. Well, what do you expect to catch here in the office? Well, some little animal has been chewing up old cigars and things on my desk. I think it's a pack rat. And tonight I'm going to find out. Now, you see, in this case, the camera shoots across the desk. I place the piece of cheese here. Now then, when the rat tries to cross the desk to get at the cheese, he hits one of the threads. Boom, goes the flash, and we get his picture. You're wonderful, Mr. Morgan. With two murders around here, and the stars holding the stop signal against you, you go on playing with your toys. Why not get an electric train? And I better get you a sandwich. Hmm? Oh. Have you girls got a match? <laughs> trying to sleep in that chair? It's a lovely chair. Why don't you go over to the dormitory and sleep like a human being? You'll wake up with a kink in your medulla oblongata. How do you know I wear them? Huh? Ah, oh, wise guy, huh? Go to sleep, little boy. You've got to get up early in the morning and play detective again. Lots of fun, too. I hope you get your pack rat. Johnny, what's that? Well, <laughs> guess I got the little fellow that time. Who was it? Oh, a mouse, probably. We'll find out in the morning. Very unusual mouse. Must have weighed a couple of hundred pounds. What do you mean? Well, I was only half asleep when the flash went off. I distinctly heard someone run out of the office. Huh? Who could it be? Perhaps you ran away and didn't get back. Oh. That would have put you to sleep. Do you know what it is? Hmm, certainly isn't gardenia. Somebody must have wanted to stop my snoring. I told you the sign of the scorpion never lies. Now that does the camera. Come along. Let's develop this negative. A little under time. It's coming all right. Say, what the... Say, who does that look like? That's Edwin Strange. I was afraid you were going to say that. It is Edwin Strange. It can't be. The camera never lies. Well, it's lying now. Strange has been dead for seven years. You know that as well as I do. I was a pallbearer at his funeral. Perhaps it's a spirit picture. Well, it couldn't even be that. Strange had to quit pictures when his face was so badly scarred by fire that he didn't face the camera. That's the way Strange looked when he was a great star. <laughs> Yes, funny, isn't it? But don't you see what's happened? You photographed a picture of Edwin Strange, the one on your desk. Oh, you mean the camera picked it up? Yes. <laughs> what a sap I am. Sure. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It'd be much simpler if those two pictures were alike. But there, Strange's mouth is open. In that picture on my desk, it was closed. I got it. We're both crazy. Yes. Let's make it a threesome. I'm going to show this to McCain. So now it's your guess. You're sure that film was never exposed before? Sure. And you're positive it's a picture of Edwin Strange? Absolutely. Are there any other pictures of Strange around here? 
You know, still pictures taken when he was a star. Oh, plenty. They're in the vaults under the projection room. Let's get some of them. Then we'll put them under the magnifier and see how they compare. Say, you know that camera gag of yours was pretty good? And if you ever want to give up this job and become a detective, you let me know. Detective? <laughs> You'll need a magician to explain that photograph. Come on. Stop. Turn back before it is too late. <laughs> They're running a picture upstairs, and the sound's coming through that ventilator. Yeah, here we are. There's the picture file for Edwin Strange. Hundreds of stills. A good-looking guy, wasn't he? Yeah, and he was a great actor. We lost our best bet when we lost him. Who's the girl? Claire Woodward. She was Strange's wife at the time this picture was taken. But a couple of years after his death, she married E. Gordon Smith. Say, I remember Edwin Strange in that picture. The Musketeer. I thought you'd fall for that. That isn't Strange. That's E. Gordon Smith, made up to look like Strange. The masquerade party. Here's Strange over here is Hamlet. That's the best imitation I've ever seen. So that's Smith impersonating Strange, huh? Mm-hmm. Did it for a gag at that party. You don't suppose Smith would try that gag again, do you? Well, we'd better talk about that somewhere else. I don't know what we're going to do, Mr. Ewing. Well, we'll have to cooperate with the police, that's all. Yes, but I've got actors, directors, writers, and stagehands after me. They're hollering their heads off, and I don't blame them. You can't make a jail out of this studio, Mr. Ewing. Well, tell them to have patience. Tell them everything. Lieutenant McCain says it'll be only a few hours now, I hope. He hopes. We all hope. All right, Mr. Ewing. Well, it couldn't be Mr. Smith. It certainly couldn't be Eddie Strange. Say, we got something here, all right, from back east? Yeah. Just a little dope on the history of our friend E. Gordon Smith. Criminal? No, nothing like that. Just a couple of cases of mental disturbances in his family. He has an uncle in a home now. You can't tell. Smith may have been a little bit touched, and that may account for the killing. You see, he was jealous of Dubeck. The night watchman was on his trail, and he didn't trust his wife. Say, that's almost enough to start a sane man on a rampage. Come on. What are you going to do? Lock him up. Oh, do you think you've got enough on him? Say, I've been right before on half this evidence. And I'm not going to give him a chance to get in any more fancy work. Let's go. I'd like to talk to Mr. Smith. It's important. He left here a half hour ago. Got a call to look at a new set on stage 12. You'll find him down there now. I wish they'd take that thing down and give the fellow the heebie-jeebie. Poor old John, you'll learn to... Wait a minute. <gasps> Gordon Smith. I guess we were right. He took a shortcut, too. Yeah? And tied his own hands afterwards, huh? Holy smoke. Another one. Goodbye to Mr. E. Gordon Smith. Tonight we'll see the world attraction his greatest spectacle, and by midnight there will be no studio. Don't let anyone near Miss Woodward's dressing room. It was Lieutenant McCain's orders. What's happened now? Her husband's just been killed. She may be the next. Mr. Smith? Oh, this is terrible. I can't stand it much longer, I tell you. Please, madame, calm yourself. If Gordon were only here, I wouldn't mind half so much. But where is he? Why doesn't he come? Here, here drink this, madame. No, no, Suzanne. I'm sure it will help you. Who is it? Tyson, I want to see you. You can't see Miss Woodward. Stick to orders. What is it, Tyson? Oh, I, I just came up to tell Shut you. Shut up. That. Well, it's about Mr. Smith. He was. Oh! Mr. Hewitt, please. What about Gordon? I I'm terribly sorry about Gordon. I'll come right over. Tell me, has something happened to him? I'll be right over. No. No. Uh, 
Now it's up to you fellas to protect the studio. Nobody knows what this guy is going to do. You can't figure him. He's insane. You keep every one of your firemen on duty. I've got six of my men on guard in the arsenal. They'll take orders from you. And the same goes for the generator room. Put a man you can trust on in every switchboard. That's all, men. The lines are all sliced. We haven't 20 feet of good fire hose left on the lot. There's three short circuits already. Get fire equipment from the Hollywood station. Ask them to stand by in case of an emergency. you look at it, all these murders are connected with the song of the Toreador. It's a jinx picture. But who do you suppose would want to do it? If I were at all superstitious, I'd think it was the ghost of Edwin Strange. Is that who came into the office last night? No. No. Ghosts do not set off flashlights. No, and they don't make so much noise running away. A maniac with a fixation on the song of the Toreador. Everything has to do with that picture. There's the knife that killed the watchman. That was on a wall on the Spanish set. Quebec wore this in the picture. You can see it stained with fake blood. We found Smith's hands tied with this. That's an ornamental chain used on the Picador's horse. That candle. We found that and a mirror with some face putty. That was used by the murderer to make up. And all of these came from the Spanish set. And... What a dub I've been. Why did I think of it before? These things not only came from the song of the Toreador, but they all came from one set, stage 13. Johnny, where are you going? I'm going to take a little stroll onto the Spanish set and see what it gives. Oh, then I'm going with you. No, I'm sorry, no women are allowed. Johnny, wait! I didn't tell you before, but the stars say that your life's in danger. Well, that's all right. Phone McCain's office and tell him to send up his entire police force. Johnny, come back here! But the trouble is, we're not dealing with the same man, Mr. Hewitt. Well, can't you do something? It's like a nightmare. And then now the studio may burn to the ground. Oh, not much danger of that. We have enough fire apparatus standing by. Well, isn't there something you can do to find this man? It's like finding a needle in a haystack. This studio covers 20 acres of buildings and exterior sets. Why, 50 men could hide here. That's the trouble. It's too big. And I haven't got enough men to watch and listen everywhere. Well, we could listen on all the stages. Why, yes, if I had three men on each stage. Oh, no, no, you and I can listen on every one of them. What do you mean? There's a microphone on every stage. The sound picked up by them comes in through a loudspeaker in the mixing room. We can even record them. Say, let's have a look at that. Right. Open up the general microphone circuit on all the stages. Yes. We'll try stage one. What's going on there? the grave. Stop. I can't go any further. Stop, you say? Who's directing this picture, you or I? I'm sorry, Mr. Walter, but I'm nervous. I'm afraid. You, the Batman, afraid. <laughs> That's a hot one. In pictures, you scare kids until they can't sleep at night, and in real life, you're frightened of a shadow. You don't understand. Certain things make me ill. That's why I'm a vegetarian. I, I can't eat meat. And with all the murders going on around here... <laughs> Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Acting like a baby. What, you afraid of... Uh... You're right. Company dismissed. All right, company dismissed. Kill the fog. <coughs> Check. Right over here, boys. Well, well. Try stage two. 
All right, boys, come on, let's rehearse it. Quiet. Now, come on, girls, let's go. Mm, pretty. <laughs> well, who are you? I'm a Statue of Liberty. And where are you from? I'm from Saskatchewan. I beg your pardon? You didn't do anything yet. Oh, boys, boys, wait a minute, will you? This is supposed to be a comedy. I'm not nervous, and there's no reason for you to be nervous. You're not nervous? Certainly not. What's that behind you? Where? There! Are there people on all the stages at this hour of the night? No. Stage 9, 10, 13, and 14 are empty, except for the sets. Well, let's play around with them and see what we can pick up. Nothing happening on stage 12. Try another one and keep moving. Johnny. <gasps> it can't be. It can't be. But the resemblance is amazing. You recognize me? The makeup's perfect. You look exactly as Eddie Strange did seven years ago. I am Edwin Strange. The man you buried seven years ago is a poor fellow I found on the road. The night I disappeared. Do you think this caricature of a face is the result of an accident? Oh, no. And our dear friend, E. Gordon Smith, sent me into that fire scene. He didn't kill me as he intended, but he destroyed my face, and with it, my career. I could bear to go on living, watching the pity in people's eyes. I'd been used to applause, not pity. So I decided to go to Mexico, where no one would recognize what was left of Edwin Strange. On my way south, I saw the body of a man who'd been struck by an automobile, and left by the roadside to die. His face, too, had been destroyed, but he was lucky. He was dead. So the idea came to me then to make my disappearance complete. I changed clothes with him, and left him to be buried as the great star. It was strange. Clever, wasn't it? And nobody ever recognized you? No one. Mexico was a kindly place to me. I went to work on an electrical power project. I learned electrical engineering. I'd have been there yet, but one day... Where's Lieutenant McCain? I've got to find him. He's with Mr. Hewitt in the mixing room. Thank you. Take a detail of men and surround stage 13. Your publicity, Johnny, went farther than you thought. It reached me even in Mexico. I read they were going to remake the song of the Toreador. Having robbed me of my life, they were also going to rob me of the one thing that was left to me. The memory of my greatness. That's when I decided they would never live to echo the success that had been mine. That's why I came here. Johnny's on stage 13. The door's locked. I couldn't get in. We know that. Listen. If you're Edwin Strange, why didn't you come to see me? Eddie Strange was my best friend. I tried to talk to you that other night when the flashlight went off. Then why did you bring that nice-smelling scarf along? That was for the girl. I wanted no interruptions. Too bad you came here, Johnny, because now you'll have to stay. Five minutes more and my work will be done. I planted dynamite in a dozen places on the lot and installed a master switch. Come on. It's one chance in a thousand. When I pull that switch... Eddie! Eddie! Stay where you are, Johnny. Why? I still don't believe your Eddie's strange. He wouldn't look the way you do now. You mean this makeup? This mask? But even so, why? I know what you're going to ask. I'll tell you. I killed a Beck. 
Because his success meant the wiping out forever of the name of Edwin Strange. I knew that Gordon Smith and my charming wife, Claire Woodward, were trying to get rid of me so that they could marry. That's why I killed him and tried to do away with her, too. As for the watchman, well, that was unfortunate. Eddie, wait. No time, Johnny. Look here, Eddie, let's forget all this. We'll explain everything to Hewitt. Too late, Johnny. You and I will never see Hewitt again. I very much doubt if anyone will ever see him again. Goodbye, Johnny. Have every light in the studio turned on, both outside and in. Yes, sir. Spread out. Watch the roof and shoot to kill. Break that door down. Are we safe now? Yes. Clear the studio while we disconnect that switch. Then we can settle down to work? Your troubles will be over in 15 minutes. Poor Eddie. I hope we can keep his name out of this. We'd all like to remember him as he was. I'll do what I can. Thanks, McCain. But I've lost all confidence in the stars. Good. I'm going to take up numerology. Uh, what's that? Well, if the letters of your name don't add up right, you change it. Say, that's a swell idea. We'll change your name tomorrow. Haven't I anything to say about that? Yep, just two words. Two words? Yep, I do. Oh, Johnny. <laughs>